Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about bad science today. So, for those of you who don't know what a p-value is, it's a scientific score, it goes from zero to 100%, and if you're a scientist and your study gets a p-value of 5% or lower, your paper gets published. So great, right? <laughs> what it's really supposed to be is it's supposed to be a measure that nothing is happening. So imagine that you're working on a new cancer drug, right? Um, if you have a p-value of five or less that your cancer drug does nothing, then great, 95% chance that our cancer drug does something, now we can help people cure, uh, cure cancer. And this is really important because we want to make sure that we're giving people drugs that work. We want to make sure that we're publishing things that meet a good standard, like I don't want to be publishing some crazy study saying hurricanes have genders or whatever. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you guys are at Ignite, right? You want to hear that science is real and scientists never lie. This sort of thing can't really happen, right? Not really. Okay, so let's talk about how. If I'm an unscrupulous sort of scientist, one thing that I might want to do is I might study 20 different cancer drugs, and if I run this study 20 times, one of them, just through pure chance, is going to come up looking like it does something. And that's exactly what the scientists in this Hurricanes paper did. They took a public data set, and they ran 14 different statistical models on it. The 14th model pops up, Oh, female hurricanes are deadlier than male hurricanes. But if you actually read the paper, the w process by which they're describing this happens makes no sense. What they're saying is that, like, women, women are cool, right? <laughs> if, if you hear about a hurricane coming by and it's got a cool name like Katrina, you're like, Katrina, come on in, no problem. But if you hear about a scary hurricane named Dennis <laughs> or Stan, you buckle down, you get ready. So my first tip for you guys is, when you uh, see one of these scientific, you know, science claims types articles, just ask how, how does it work? And the good news is this, uh, this hurricane's paper, it didn't really cause any negative problems, but let me introduce you to some scientists. Uh, these are doctors Reinhardt and Rogoff. They were two, um, or are, two Harvard economists. And in 2009, in the wake of the financial crisis, they published a paper um, which claimed that the financial crisis was fundamentally different from other economic downturns. Normally, in an economic downturn, you want to increase government spending, but what they were saying was that this time is different. Instead, we need to slash budgets. In fact, that was the title of their book, This Time is Different. And as you might imagine, some uh, politicians, namely conservatives, were so excited when they saw this topic, they said, we want to slash budgets anyway, and now this is it. This is our time to slash those budgets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see a lot of you recognize this is Paul Ryan. He was running for vice president in 2012, and during his campaign, he would frequently cite this Reinhardt Rogoff paper. And although he didn't win, a lot of politicians who were running for office around the same time did win, especially in Europe, and they proceeded to do exactly what Reinhardt and Rogoff had suggested. They went around slashing budgets. But you guys were listening to the first half of my talk, right? You know to ask how, so, oh, Reinhardt and Rogoff told us it was a secret. Their model was too good for them to release their methods. <laughs> yeah. So, while that was going on, countries like Greece were busy following their advice and noticing that their economies were tanking and continued to have problems for a long time. And it wasn't until 2013 that uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff finally released their methodology. And do you know what it was? It was a very simple Excel model, the sort of thing that almost anybody in this room I'm certain could have put together. And not only that, there was a basic error in the model, which was caught within a week. A grad student published a paper refuting their core finding. And so that brings me to my final point. Secrets are not science. Because if secrets are science, yeah, I'm a scientist. I can tell you that 95% of these slides don't cause cancer. And where does that leave us? Thank you.